Hi, welcome to Happy Tales. I'm Cheryl Rosenthal, Communications and Education Coordinator here at the Oshkosh Area Humane Society. And I'm Joni Geiger, Executive Director. And today our show is all about grooming, and we have a really special show for you today. Uh, joining us is Amy from A Touch of Class Pet Resort, and sitting on her lap is Pumpkin, <laughs> and next to her is her dog, Jiggy. Jiggy. And on my lap is a little Shih Tzu by the name of Anna. Anna. And today we're going to talk about everything about grooming, th reasons why you should have your pet groomed, uh, and how you can do some grooming at home. So welcome, Amy, and thank you for being here. And how long have you been grooming dogs? I have been grooming dogs for 12 years. Wow. I have owned my own business for four of those 12 years. Wow. How did you cool. get started? What, what, what prompted you to do this? Um, love of animals, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, I used to manage a, a pet store and I really liked that but the hours were very long mm -hmm. um, you know anytime we had somebody that didn't show for work I covered that and once I grew up and got married and had a family of my own my hours were pretty limited so I turned to grooming because I could make my own schedule and mm -hmm. I still get to work with the animals. What so. kind of dogs what kind of pets need to be groomed? All of them so good answer yes. <laughs> so a lot of people personally i have groomed um anything from dogs cats guinea pigs rabbits ferrets um done nail trims on birds wing trims on birds um even nail trims on reptiles iguanas things sure. like oh, that sure mm -hmm. so you do a lot of the things that maybe some of us as pet owners are not comfortable doing or aren't able to do for sure uh and so why is that so important that, that our pets are groomed? Um, grooming is very important just to keep your pets healthy. Um, in, in grooming, it, it's not just you know the, the brushing and giving them a haircut and making them look pretty. It, it's also things that are um, necessary for their health. Um, we clean their ears, um, look for any problems there. We keep their nails trimmed so they don't have any problems with um, toe malformations later on in life. Um, we keep their coats nice and clean and tangle free so we can see any growths or parasites or skin infections, um, anything like that going on with the dog. Um, and also grooming helps spread the, the natural oils of the dog's coat um, throughout the coat which then of course in, in, improves circulation. Well, and so. we see, you know, obviously in a shelter environment, we see just a number of animals and we see a number of different coats and varieties and so on and so forth and all different varying degrees of really well-maintained and very poorly maintained. Right. And obviously, uh, like Shih Tzu's like this, um, you know, different kind of fur that you're handling, obviously, with your boxer. And, you know, we see a lot of things knotted and, you mm -hmm. know, not so good. So, so obviously keeping up on that is much more comfortable for the animal. Definitely, definitely. And at our shop, we always say humanity before vanity. Um, if a customer brings us a dog that is severely matted and wants us to brush it out, we will not. Um, it is just too hard on the dog's coat. And people don't understand that when they get those tangles and those knots, they get so close to the skin mm. that they actually pull the skin up in there and if there's any moisture in there, that it creates a breeding ground for bacteria and yeast. And a lot of times they'll get open sores even underneath we, those we've mats. We've seen that. Yeah, we see that Multiple especially times. with cats. Uh, yeah. Your, your yeah. Persians, your Angoras, they get all matted underneath their arms, on their mm -hmm. belly. Mm -hmm. And it, it's painful. If you've ever had, you have long hair, I have longer hair. Joni doesn't have that problem. No. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it gets knotted. Just think about it. When you were a child and your mom tried to brush that Howie, out of your Howie. hair, mm -hmm. how, yeah. how oh, much yeah. that hurt. Yeah. Um, so. What about dogs who don't like to be touched or have their, you know, they don't like you looking in their ears? Is there things that people should be doing with their pet to try to get them comfortable to be grooming and looked at? Or, yes, you know, definitely. How, how, in, how much should I be doing um, with my own dog? Really, it, if you can, you, we start out with just the youngest of puppies, and as soon as you're handling them, we start looking in their ears and tickling around their ears and and picking up their feet and, and looking at their feet and touching all their nails and, and looking in their mouth and 
Um, just so you're not actually doing anything, stuff. you're just touching. No, just, just touching handling. to desensitize. Okay, so that um, when and, you need to touch, and you, you could can. even do that when when you adopt an older dog from the shelter. Um, it's equally as important to just to start handling them everywhere, um, and it also improves your bonding process with sure. your dog. Sure. You know, How, they learn to trust you and and let you do all that kind of stuff. How often does a pet need to be groomed? Um, it, every is pet is different. Okay. There's no true guideline. Um, a dog like Jiggy, maybe uh, toenails once a month, ear cleaning once a month, um, but other than that, bathing maybe three, four times a year. Um, she keeps herself pretty clean. She doesn't need a whole lot um, along those lines, but a, a little guy like this, like Pumpkin here, um, he would probably need grooming every six to eight weeks. Now, what if you, you know, like, um, what if you were to do a shorter cut or a puppy cut like that? I mean, is mm -hmm. for a lot of people, you know, obviously dogs like this, and they have to be groomed, mm -hmm. you know, because there is hair that grows in their ears between the pads of their feet. Those are all things that need attention. Right. But if, if people do what they call a puppy cut, which is, you know, a shorter cut all the way down, mm -hmm. and then let it grow out, what is reasonable to say, you know, you should, at, at a minimum, you should do every couple of months? Every yeah. 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 Okay. At a bare minimum with a dog like this, every 10 to 12 weeks, bare okay. minimum. Um, the longer you keep the coat, the more often they'll need grooming. Um, we have some Shih Tzus that come in that are full coated, like a, a show coat. Sure. And they come in every three to four weeks. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I would imagine to maintain that, yeah. that, would have to, that would have to happen. You know, so. so that's something that people really need to think about when they're getting a particular breed of dog. How much grooming is it going to need? Definitely. Now, I know like Siberian Huskies, they have a tendency, they blow their coat in the spring and the fall. Mm -hmm. And I had a dog like that, that, you know, for weeks I would just, I'd brush every day and I'd end up with a bag full. Um, right. Is it, is it better to do that over a period of time or to bring my dog to you? Are you able to get all that fur out in one one grooming? Or in is that most just cases, yes, because um, when you take your dog to a professional groomer, we have professional products. So on a dog like that, we would use our undercoat de-shedding shampoo, which helps get that all out. And then we also have high velocity dryers, which it's kind of like a, a high power dryer, like picture your hair dryer, but then um, putting a nozzle on that. So the end is only about an inch around so okay. it, it's Kinda a little like bit a high tool? power so it yeah focuses. right it focuses and it, it blows that coat out um, a lot of times when we're doing dogs like that our bathing room looks like it's blizzarding mm. oh, wow. the hair just flies that's out that's what my house always looked like it looked <laughs> yeah. like it was blizzarding <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have a question for you. You know, like a, a lot of the long-haired dogs, you know, mm -hmm. the collies and the sheep dogs and so on and so forth, I have seen them shaved. You know, people would do mm -hmm. that sometimes for, I, I don't know if they call it a summer cut or what, sure. but obviously with the warmer weather. Um, good thing or not so good or, or okay to do? Or it, it is okay to do. We always tell people um, with the double-coated dogs like that, it may not grow back. Um, real fast because mm -hmm. the the undercoat and and the outer coat will actually grow at different rates mm -hmm. So they can look pretty funny for a long time yeah. um, but Is that harmful to the dog? I mean does no. that take does that remove any of the insulation or protection that protection that they um, You know if have? if you're looking <clears throat> at um, a dog like a, a husky or um, What like a great Pyrenees or um, any of those dogs, it, it does, you know, that, that coat is there for um, heating in the winter, but it also helps cool them in the summer. Right. Um, a lot of people, when we groom their dogs, those particular breeds, um, especially like the longer coated ones, like your, your Great Peers, your Shelties, your Collies, um, we, we don't shave them down to an eighth of an inch. We, we leave them so an leave, inch to two inches right. of coat. Okay. So they yeah. have some so insulation. So they still have that insulation, plus the owners are not having that shutting problem in their house. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so it, it's kind of the best of both worlds. That, that makes a lot of sense to yeah. me. Yeah, mm. that really does. Yeah. So, well, that's good to know. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. and, and I think we're gonna be doing some Yes, um, I think we're gonna take a little break here and we're gonna bring in a grooming table. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna see how we're going to, we're going to the beauty salon. Yes. So right. we'll be right back. <laughs> All right. All right, we are back, and uh, we have Jiggy up on the grooming table. Uh, this is how you would normally 
uh, groom a dog at the salon. Right. Um, normally we would have a grooming arm coming up here um, with a noose just so it's kind of like my extra hand um, to keep them on the table. But since Jiggy is an old pro at this, she's on a grooming table almost daily. Um, and I have some ladies here to assist. We're going to skip the, the grooming arm and noose today. Okay. So what are you going to demo for us first? Um, I think with Jiggy we will um, talk about ear cleaning. Um, ear cleaning is very important. Um, we want to keep any bacteria or yeast out of the ear. Um, it's very important when you're cleaning the ear not to use water. I get a lot of people into the shop that say, oh, I used water to clean my dog's ear and now they have this really bad infection. Well, any moisture that gets down into the ear is going to stay there and become a breeding ground for bacteria and yeast. So you want to use an ear cleaner that's made for dogs. Usually it has a drying agent in it, um, something like alcohol, that's going to pull the moisture out of the ear. And then should we be sticking anything in our dog's ear? I mean, we should um, just be cleaning the outer ear? The outer ear. We don't go any further than what we can see. So I have a cotton ball here, and I have my ear cleaner in here. So I'm just going to get a little bit on there. And I'm going to hold her ear open and gently swab around that outer ear. And again, I'm not going any further than what I can see. Now, some dogs are more prone to uh, keeping bacteria in the ears, and, and uh, what, what would that be, like dogs with longer? Dogs with longer hair, mm -hmm. um, like cockers especially, they get that, that real thick coat mm -hmm. and that heavy hair on their ear pulls the ear down and it doesn't allow any air to get in the ear. So um, again, no, no moisture really gets out of there. Um, dogs that have ears that stand up are a little less prone because their ears are up and the air can get right in there. Mm -hmm. um, so it makes things a lot easier. And sure. people who take their dogs swimming, is there something, you know, if you, if you have there a lab? There is, there is. That is doing? very important. Um, and actually what I recommend to my customers that have dogs that swim a lot is to keep some ear powder on hand. Um, it, it's just a powder that you put in the ear and it'll draw any moisture out. You don't have to mess with um, using the cleaner each and every time, but just a little bit of shot of powder in, in each ear after they're done swimming and it'll draw the moisture out and you're and good to go. And the dog helps by shaking his head and, right. and usually the dog shaking its head gets the moisture moving up and out and comes right. in contact with the powder right. and, and can eliminate that now, problem. Now, when you're cleaning the ear, it is okay to use a Q-tip, but I'm not going to be digging down in her ear. Um, if you look in a dog's ear, you see all these neat little folds around there, and that's just really nice for getting in and around those folds and getting the dirt out of those. And, like and how so. often did you say you should do this, Amy? Once a week? To, twice a week? Um, minimum once a month. What, minimum? Minimum okay. once a month. Okay. It can and be maybe done a little weekly. bit more frequently if you have a dog that is more prone to right. that. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. And okay. oftentimes, you know, sometimes people say, oh, my dog smells. That's, that's a good sign that they have a yeast infection or some type of right. ear infection. Right. And um, that needs to be seen by their veterinarian. Right. Signs of an ear infection would be excessive dirty ears. Um, you'll notice a lot of redness to the ear. It won't be nice and pink like this. It'll be red, red and swollen. Um, you'll also notice an odor, and you may notice your dog scratching at that ear a lot or shaking its head a lot. Um, in those cases, you need to go to a vet. There, there aren't any at-home remedies that are going to work right. for that. You right. need to go see your vet and, and have them. They'll probably do a, a swab of the ear to determine whether it's bacterial or yeast and treat accordingly. What if my dog doesn't, you know, not everybody's dog is going to sit as nicely as Jiggy is here. Um, what do you recommend? Should people just try to do a little bit at a time and then mm -hmm. go back to it, kind of desensitizing yeah. their dog or try, yep. trying the methods that it, we talked about earlier? It goes back to what we talked about earlier, um, just handling them. Even when you're not cleaning their ears, look in their ears, play with the ear, um, you know, stick your fingers in there just to help desensitize. Okay. And you can't do Good. that enough. Um, even while you're sitting on the couch watching a movie and your dog's laying there, Play Look in its ears. mouth, play with the ears, play with the feet. Um, because everything you're doing does not hurt. It's right. just unusual. They just aren't used to someone touching or fooling with the ears and exactly. nails or the feet or the, you know, all these little sensitive areas that they, it's just weird to them. Right. So if you, you're absolutely right. If you desensitize them, it really makes it that much easier. Yeah. Okay. And if you have a dog like Pumpkin here, um, 
the, the longer coated breeds, a lot of times they'll grow hair in that inner ear. Um, we do need to pluck that out, um, just again, to allow air to get in there and the moisture to get out. Um, and we do use the powder to do that. It just allows us to get uh, a little bit better handle on that hair to, to pull it out mm -hmm. of the ear. Um, and we do have some shots of pumpkin's ear before being plucked and then clean after it was plucked and And cleaned. is that really hurt, hurt them when you do that or? It, you know, it, it's got to be a little bit uncomfortable, but it is necessary. Um, if you leave that hair in there, it, right. it again, all the moisture infection. stays in, you're going to get an infection out yeah. of it. So okay. um, it's, it's not something that they particularly like. And I think a lot of the powders now do have a little bit of lidocaine in it, so they do help kind of numb that a little bit so it doesn't hurt quite so bad. But it, it's not their favorite thing. Right. But, but if you again, do it on a regular necessary. basis, there isn't going to be all that hair to pull right. out. Right, you're not going to have to pull big bunches out. You know, you may be pulling four or five strands of hair out every couple of weeks. And, right. you know, that, okay. that's a good way to do it. Okay. So nail trimming, that's, nail always, trimming. that's always a big thing. Yeah. Nail yeah. trimming. Yeah. Mm, Especially yes. if your dog has black nails. Yes, yes. Stand. Now, when doing nails, um, I find that a lot of people will try to hold their dog's nail or hold their dog's foot up like this and try to look and be like, well, it looks like right there's a good spot. Don't ever do that. That is very bad. Um, nine times out of ten, you're going to end up cutting the nail too short. Um, so you'll actually cut the quick that's in there, which is the blood supply. Um, if you cut the quick, the nail will bleed. It, it does bleed a lot. Um, your dog's not going to bleed to death, but you should have products on hand to stop the bleeding. Um, if you are going to try this, quick stop. Um, get some Quick Stop, or there's other brands out there like Sure Clot or whatever. They're they're basically all the same. Um, it's it's a styptic powder, is what it is. So it, it's going to stop the bleeding on contact. Um, so when we do clip nails, we're going to go with the dog's natural movement. I'm going to pull her foot back like this so cool. I can see the bottoms of her nails. It's very important to be able to see that and I will show you why. I'm just going to take little tiny slivers off and on her white nails you'll actually, as you're taking little tiny slivers off, you'll start to see a pink dot in the center of the nail. That's the quick. We don't go any further than that. That tells you stop. That tells see me to stop. See a dot, you should stop. Exactly. Um, and I, I see again. that uh, evidently somebody at your house likes to paint nails. Oh yes, you know, Jiggy, <laughs> Jiggy's a little bit of a princess. I don't know if you can zoom in on this, but there is without the pink dot, you see it's all white in the center, and here is with the pink dot, so you can see. So you shouldn't be just taking a big hunk of nail off. Never. You should be doing mm -hmm. layer by layer by right. layer. Right, even if the doing. dog's nails look really long and overgrown, a lot oh, of yeah. times when, when they are growing like that, the quick inside grows along with the nail. So you can't just say, well, I want them to be this long and cut it off because it's going to be a And when you do cut mess. the quick, that is painful. Yes, so, it is very painful. So let them. me ask you this, Amy. So if you do have overgrown nails, and mm -hmm. you're right, the quick grows with the nail, mm -hmm. So, but you could eventually, if you cut a little bit each time, you can yeah. actually get that quick to go back as Once well. Once a week. Yeah. Okay. Once a week, have the nails clipped, and it'll gradually move okay. back. Because we've seen that many times where we've got dogs that come in with right. overgrown nails and you have to be very careful obviously and clip them on a regular basis but a, a small amount. Right. Okay. Yeah. I always just take little slivers off. Okay. So what about the black nail? I have dogs with black nails and I'm terrified to cut their nails. Yep. Now you can see the little black oh. dot in the center. Okay. And that okay. means you should stop that again. That means stop. You okay. see the dot, you stop. So dogs that run on a regular basis, dogs that get a lot of exercise running on gravel, concrete, that type of thing, their nails may not need to be cut as often? Correct. Um, but normally, when you have a dog like that, they'll either use their, their back nails to push off or their front nails. So even with those dogs, we need to see them and look at their nails because usually one or the other does still mm -hmm. need to be clipped, it just in the right. way that the, yeah. that dog moves. My dog, that's a real runner. He uses his back nails. So his front nails, I can cut those like every three to four weeks. Right. And the back nails, you never have to touch. Yeah. Yep. We should probably talk about bathing. 
Yes. Um, and a dog like Jiggy, as we mentioned before, um, we don't need to bathe her quite as much as we would be bathing a, a little guy like Pumpkin there. Um, very important when you're bathing your dog to use a dog shampoo. Um, don't use a people shampoo. It's not pH balanced correctly for their skin. Um, I did pull a couple of them oh. off the shelf and bring them along today. Um, this one is a, a chamomile oatmeal, which is very nice and soothing. Um, a good one to use at home. Um, and you can use that one, you know, as often as even once a week if you had to bathe your dog that often. Normally we recommend that if you are bathing, you do it about once a month so you don't dry out that, that skin What about coat. people that say, oh, my dog stinks or oh, I don't like how my dog smells or we have somebody in the home that has allergies mm -hmm. and we need to bathe every week. Then definitely they that, should be using, uh, looking for a really good shampoo. Right, like an oatmeal shampoo or a hypoallergenic shampoo. Um, the hypoallergenic especially because the, the humans aren't going to have a reaction to okay. it um, and it'll help get the dander off the dog. Um, also important now that we're talking about allergies is if your dog has environmental allergies, um, it can be beneficial. Research has shown that if you bathe those dogs about once a week in a hypoallergenic shampoo, it'll help um, pull those environmental allergens off of their coat and they'll have less skin problems due to that. So oh, wow. um, kind That's of an interesting thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I just okay. did a bunch of reading on that. So um, yeah, okay. and if you're worried about getting shampoo in your dog's eyes at home, they do make some really nice shampoos that are tearless, just like Johnson's and Johnson's baby shampoo for babies. Kind of the same sort of thing for dogs, only it's pH balanced for their skin. Um, and you don't have to worry about getting and, that in their eyes. And what about getting the shampoo in their ears? Is that something that we should worry about or it, rinse, it is rinsing them? something that you, you should worry earlier, about. Because you said earlier, no water in their ears, no water so in now their we're ears. giving a bath. So what you're going to do is take cotton balls and make them some earplugs. Okay. So you, you plug the ear with cotton. No water will get in there during bathing. But remember, when you're done bathing, to pull those cotton <laughs> balls out. <laughs> I'm sure the dog will be shaking its head going, get these out of right, my ears. So. Right. Okay, great. Okay. We can talk about tooth brushing. If you want to grab oh, me the brush sure. and the toothpaste. Uh, oh, this is my favorite part at my house. My <laughs> dogs love their teeth brush. Right. And they make fun flavors for dogs like beef right. and chicken and peanut but butter. But it's so important that people don't use human toothpaste because very important. dogs swallow, we spit. Human toothpaste has detergents in it. Right, and if so, they're swallowing that, that can right. be very harmful and for I their mean, tummy. I've never gotten a dog to spit on command. If you guys can, <laughs> you're way better than I am. Yeah. With her, she's already accustomed to this. When you start out brushing teeth, you may need to <laughs> use, they make little rubber finger toothbrushes. So again, it just goes back to that socialization stuff. And you can put the, the paste on your finger or on the finger brush and just rub in here into the gums. Um, but she's used to that stuff already, so we're just going to go ahead and get that in there and, and brush her teeth. Now the nice thing with this toothpaste is I don't have to really get in there and scrub like I do my own teeth. This is an enzymatic toothpaste, which means it has enzymes in it. So I just have to get it all over and the little enzymes are going to eat away all the yucky stuff. So you get it in their mouth, get it on their teeth, yep. get it close. Yep. Getting it even in their mouth is better than nothing at all. So, Correct. And, and as is, you can see, she kind of loves it. Yeah. <laughs> and this is something that we should do every day if possible? Every day if possible, minimum three times a week. Um, and it is very important. It's going to save you money in the long run because your dog won't have to have the professional cleanings done by the vet. Which are um, very costly. Which are very days. costly. Mm -hmm. And your dog is put under anesthesia. Anytime you put a dog under anesthesia, there's always a risk that your dog won't wake up. So, especially as they get older. Once that the periodontal disease, gingivitis, um, sets in, the bacterial infections that are in their mouth can transfer to the bloodstream um, and affect the kidneys, the liver, the heart, and even the brain. So, if you're going to do one thing at home as far as grooming your dog, brush its teeth. All right, uh, can we move on to brushes? We need we to sure know can. about brushes. Uh, I get very confused. I don't know what to brush my dog with. Okay. On a short-coated dog like Jiggy, there's a few different options. Um, one that the dogs really tend to like is, this is a Zoom Groom. It's, it's a rubber brush, so it's almost like a massage. 
and we can go ahead and, and start brushing her like this and you can see how well that gets the hair out. Ooh, I think I need one like that yeah. for Yeah. <laughs> and with this one it's really nice because you can go against the grain, you can go with the grain of the hair, and it's not going to hurt her. It's just going to get that fur flying. Now, going against the grain though or doing that with a dog with long hair? No. Not a good thing? Mm -mm. Okay. No. We only do that with the short coated guys. Um, and then we also have here, which is the most popular, coolest thing that's ever been invented um, lately, is the Furminator. Now this one you do not go against the grain with. Um, it doesn't look like much, but you just go with the grain of the hair and it pulls all that dead coat out. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, when I do my pug, and I'll tell you, oh my gosh, the hair that comes out of there, but I do have a Furminator and after a certain point in time she seems to not like it anymore. Right. That's why we tend to use both. We'll, okay. we'll team them up because this can be a little harsh. If you have a dog like right. a pug that sheds mm -hmm. like crazy, Ugh. so you're doing a lot of brushing. Yeah. Maybe this one this, loosens it up and this right, one pulls right. it right. up. Okay. I usually so, okay. start with the Zoom Room and really That's get really, in there and loosen yeah. up as much as I yeah, can I with that. Um, and, then, and then I use the, the Furminator over, cool. over the top of yeah. that to, okay. to get the rest out. Um, and then we'll move along to our long-coated dogs like Pumpkin. <laughs> All right, on a dog like Pumpkin here, we're going to use a brush like this. It has little wires on it. It's a slicker brush is what they call it. And the, the way to properly brush your dog at home, a lot of people will just do this, which yeah, that, that's nice, but we have to make sure we get the brush right down to the skin to make sure we're pulling out those tangles that are really close to the skin. So we'll actually separate the hair and kind of brush in layers like this okay. to make sure we get everything. Okay. And then you can always follow up with a comb. <laughs> Shake it off. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Just follow up with a comb to make sure that you got okay. everything. And then I think we had a mat in the ear that we, we were going to... We do have a mat in the ear and a burr in the tail. So well, let's yeah. do one or the other. Um, so, you know, you could try to brush out the mat with, with a slicker brush like this, and it will take out some of the smaller mats. But what happens if you get a, a big mat that you maybe can't get out with a slicker brush and a comb, you're going to use a dematting rake, which is like this. Um, you can purchase these at any, any store. We have them at a Touch of Class Pet Resort for sale as well. Um, it, it does have like little blades on it. So there is a spot here for your thumb. You're going to make sure you put your thumb there. Um, and then you're going to hold, um, because his, his mat is in his ear, I'm going to be especially careful. I have to make sure I have that ear flap flat in my hand. And I just go underneath the mat and I use a gentle sawing motion just oh. to break it up. And as you so see, it's a it, sawing motion. Yeah, I wondered it's how that works. It's the sawing worked. motion that, that gets okay. through there. And right. um, there it is. It, it's completely gone. So, and it caused him very little pain. Oh. Well, Amy, our time is running short. I, we, I wish our show was <laughs> right. an hour long uh, because there's so much information that we yes. all need to know about grooming our pets. I'll come back uh, again some other time. How well, about that? Maybe, oh, that would be great. We'll have to have a little, a little extension to our show. So thank you for all the information oh, that you shared welcome. with our viewers. And if you have any questions, please contact you know, Touch of Class or give us a call here. Uh, you know, find out, you know, does your dog need to be groomed? Uh, and, and what you need to be looking for. So thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy, happy tales, tales to you. you.